Well, I'm going to <coughs> talk about Flathead, which I think everybody would agree here is really the backbone of the recreational fishery in Tasmania. Um, so that's really the focus of what I want to talk about today. Um, we have at least four species of flathead in Tasmania. Sand flathead, which is uh, number one, and that's really what I want to talk quite a bit about. We see tiger flathead here, blue spotted flathead, uh, rock flathead as well, and there are, I guess, unconfirmed reports that we get dusky flathead. And if anyone has caught a dusky flathead in Tasmania and is absolutely confident of the ID, I'd really like to hear from you. Uh, so in terms of the research that uh, we've been doing over a number of years in relation to flathead, we have a, a number of sources of information. One is these uh, catch and effort surveys we do of the recreational fishery. We do them about every five years. So that's looking at the entire fishery, all species, all methods. We also, since 2012, have been doing annual research fishing surveys, um, and they're fo focused in the channel, Norfolk, Frederick Henry and Great Oyster Bay. The reason we've selected those areas is when you look at the distribution of catch, which is on the figure there, the effectively three quarters of the total catch of flathead in Tasmania comes from those three areas. So it's clearly very important. We also do uh, annual fishery assessments as part of our reporting on the state of uh, scalefish fisheries and other fisheries in Tasmania, and we incorporate the recreational catches into those assessments where we have them. Uh, more recently, we've been doing a little bit of work on melanization. I think, uh, I don't know how many people here have caught a flathead and then found you know, black or gray spots all the way through it. That's um, melanization. We've been doing a little bit of research in that regard. Uh, I won't talk about that today, but there is uh, a website that we've uh, just loaded uh, called uh, the, the Black Fillet Project, and we're trying to get a better understanding of what is causing this uh, and what it really means uh, for the, the fish and, and for us as uh, consumers of uh, flathead. To put uh, flathead into perspective, um, the survey we did in 2012-13, uh, the Broad Recreational Fishing Survey, indicated that there was about half a million fisher days of effort in that 12-month period. So that's, yeah, that's quite a lot of fishing going on. And overall, about uh, 2.8 million fish were caught by recreationals and representing about 80 species. So it's quite a diverse fishery, of course. But in blue, you can see uh, the dominant species there by far is flathead. And we're currently doing or completing a survey, current survey, 27, 2018, is just finishing up at the moment. And lo and behold, flathead's come out number one again by a long shot. So that's, that's why we're interested in flathead, and I think, you know, as I say, it really is the backbone of this uh, fishery. Just looking at uh, some of our catch estimates, we've done three surveys to date, general fishing surveys, and um, there's two, two bars there. The first one, the, the uh, darker blue one, is our estimate of the total recreational catch of flathead. So in that first year, it was just under 2 million fish uh, by 2012-13, it dropped a little bit, but still um, well over uh, 1.5 million individual fish. The uh, pale colour is the numbers that are actually retained. As we all know, people release fish, and uh, in actual fact, that yellow line at the top there is indicating that between 30 or 40 per cent of all the flathead that are caught are actually released. Obviously, a number of reasons for that, not the least being size limits. So put this into perspective, um, our estimates of uh, recreational catch for these species uh, have ranged from about 360 tonnes around to 230-odd uh, tonnes retained catch by recreational sector. Put it in perspective, this is the uh, commercial catch from Tasmania. The sand flathead catch, of which pretty much all of this is for the recreationals, is about... Uh, what, 30 times higher than the commercial catch. So I guess the take home message here is that the recreationals, new recreationals are the main players in this fishery. Tiger flathead uh, catches are in the order of about 50 tonnes per year for the commercial fishery. Obviously there's uh, offshore fishery in Commonwealth waters, which is much bigger, but 
that's just focusing on um, Tasmanian waters. Uh, just a little bit of about uh, flathead biology. Um, one of the things that uh, we fishery scientists love doing is aging fish. Um, why we do it is it tells us something about the life history. It tells us how long they live, when they mature, what age, uh, what age they meet, uh, reach the legal size, and it gives us some idea of the population structure, population modelling, and, and effectively all of this is put together to support the sustainable management, which is what we're all about um, here. So how do we age flathead? Um, basically we do that by extracting ear bones. I guess a few people have heard about the ear bones. Um, in the x-ray there you can see the ear bones at the back of the head, just behind the brain. Um, and basically what we'll do is we'll take those out and uh, section them. So it's effectively like a, uh, a tree trunk section and you get areas of uh, banding. So wide areas of banding is when growth is fast and narrow, the narrow areas are where um, growth is slow. And we're able to use that to determine the age of those uh, flathead. And we, obviously we do it for many other species as well. So what do we know about uh, the sand flathead? Uh, maximum age is that we've recorded is about 17 years. I think it's uh, probably fair to say they probably go a little bit older than that um, and I have heard estimates around 20 odd years. So it's a moderately long lived fish. At any given size um, you get a, a, a wide range of, uh, sorry, ages, yes, yeah, sorry, at any given size it can be a wide range of ages and, and likewise at a given age they can be um, quite different in, in size. So it's very difficult to actually say that a fish of a certain size is a particular age. What we do know is that uh, females grow faster and to larger sizes than the males. Um, maturity, you know, what age they mature at. Well, for females, uh, it's in about the third year and it's about um, 26 uh, mils long, so well under the legal minimum size. Males actually mature at a smaller size, uh, again at around that three years of age, and they're about uh, 220 mils. Obviously what that means is that the, rec the fishery is actually based on adult fish, so we're allowing them to spawn. And in terms of when they reach legal size, uh, the current legal s uh, minimum size is about four to six years for females, and males is about five to eight years. Just looking at uh, fish growth, um, this is kind of a, a representation of uh, you know, average uh, size at age. What you can kind of see is that the normal pattern we see with fish, and that is fast growth in the early years, then they get to a, a size a bit like people. You grow fast as you're younger, and then you get to a, a size where you're not actually growing a great deal, certainly in uh, height, it's probably more in width, and it's, uh, I think it's what we see with fish. But it kind of indicates there that uh, at about that sort of five or six years of age, these flathead, are, the females at least, are entering the fishery with the uh, size limit uh, being the dotted line. In terms of males, they're actually smaller, um, and often, you know, many of the males uh, actually never reach the legal minimum size. So what does it actually mean for the, you know, what you see, what you catch? Uh, this is the kind of results of a, um, a lot of fishing work we've been doing recently. And if you look at the uh, size across the bottom and then the proportion of the catch at size that is either male or female, you see throughout the females are actually dominating the catch that we're sampling. So for some reason or other, we catch more females. But in particular, once you reach that uh, legal minimum size of the dot, dotted line there, pretty much the majority of the catch is actually female. If we look at age as an alternative way of doing it, you see again females dominating the age up until about seven or eight years of age and now we get males you know, more common um, and more abundant. And the reason for that is because the fishery is actually effectively targeting females, so we're actually removing a lot of the older females from the population, uh, whereas the males are far more protected because of their slow growth and the large size limit. Um, what can we infer from in, um, 
age structure, population structure. This is uh, one of the one of our samples we've uh, done in 2015 there, and, and I guess it just shows that uh, the typical age structure you see in uh, fish populations, probably the two and three years are uh, very small fish, so they're underrepresented. You don't tend to catch that many of those, but they are out there in the population. But from about age four on, you're getting a, a pretty good representation. And what you see is that the number uh, in each of those age classes as they go older reduces. Two reasons for that. One is natural mortality. So they just, they do die as uh, not every individual survives to uh, the maximum age they can do, but also the fishery. And that's what we've seen is the recreational fishery is having, um, exerting a lot of pressure on these fish stocks, um, which is kind of one of the reasons that uh, some of the recent management uh, measures have been put in place. If we look at, uh, just to give you some sense that um, the age structure doesn't uh, remain the same each year, this is a, a year later in the same area, what we see is this uh, four-year-old age group is underrepresented. And it's kind of suggesting that either the five-year-olds and um, three-year-olds were really bumper years and the four wasn't so good. Um, and obviously as we sort of see through, progress through time, we see that uh, differential age structure uh, representing in the fishery. And we have seen it in uh, uh, Great Oyster Bay where we had some uh, dominant older fish in the fishery for quite a few years. What that was doing is, is putting our catch rates up. We were getting really large fish and probably everybody thought everything was fantastic. Well, those older age groups, that older large um, cohort of fish or year class of fish is now pretty much fished out. So uh, in that area anyway, we're getting a more of a typical uh, age structure. Um, one, of, one of the things that we do do with our surveys, uh, these are the fishing surveys, is we're looking at how catch rate changes through time. Um, and we use that as an index of abundance. So as catch rates increase, we're assuming that uh, the abundance of fish is actually increasing. And you know, here's an example here, which what, where we do see, and this is kind of the good news story, is prior to 2015, 2016, which is when the new size limit came in, uh, catch rates of these larger fish, admittedly 32 centimetre fish, were over the legal size prior to that. What we're seeing now, and I hope you kind of see in the, in the fishery, is we're starting to see these, the catch rates of larger fish starting to improve. And, you know, that's, that's a really good sign. It's really a response to that management measure. Um, so, conclusions. Um, first up, what we do see is we have high rates of fishing pressure, particularly on the female flathead. And that's due to uh, their longer exposure to the fishery because of their faster growth, so they grow, so they grow to legal size a lot quicker. Um, and the fact they grow to larger sizes, whereas the males, slower growth, and uh, not so many of them actually get to uh, full legal size. But what we have seen is uh, you know, catch rates, size and age structure trends are starting to increase. And you know, certainly since the um, legal mean minimum size limit was uh, raised, which is suggesting that, we, that rebuilding is occurring. So this is kind of a really a good news story for the flathead. Um, another way of looking at this is uh, what we call yield per recruit analysis. Um, and that's where you effectively uh, look at uh, the trade-off between growth, leaving fish to, to grow for a longer period of time, but also as they're getting older, they're also dying. So it's kind of a trade-off between those two. And t a typical sort of fisheries analysis would tell us that our current legal minimum size limit is actually above that optimal limit. However, and this is you know, where we think it has been a really positive, is the theoretical loss in this yield per recruit is actually warranted because it has two effects. One is actually has reduced the fishing mortality, the fishing pressure on the stock because you're releasing more fish because of the, the larger size limit. So that's, that's a positive for the stock. So effective fishing pressure or fishing mortality is lower even for the same amount of fishing pressure as, as has been put in the past because of those releases. And the other one is we're providing at least another year or two years protection to the spawning stock. The females are allowed to actually 
contribute to the population for that extra time. And with that, I'll finish. Thank you. Thanks very much.